Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. Me and Bo are going to show you how to replace an engine and a lawnmower. Uh, we're going to put this brand new Briggs & Stratton engine in this thing today. And we're going to do it in record time, aren't we Bo? So what we have here is a Craftsman DLT 3000 V-Twin. It's a new Craftsman 25 horsepower engine and the owner ran it out of oil over the past couple of years so that's why we're replacing it. Uh, some things we're going to be doing is disconnecting the fuel line, we're going to disconnect those wires, we're going to disconnect the wire from the starter motor, remove the motor mount bolts, remove the pulley that's attached to the engine shaft. We're going to have to take the hood off here. There's usually some wires to disconnect. So as you're lifting it up, you pull up in this direction. It just comes right off. So to get some of these bolts off, the motor mount bolt and the pulley bolt, you can use uh, an old school uh, ratchet, but it's a lot more difficult that way. Today I'm going to do it the easy way and use a pneumatic wrench to remove the motor mount bolts and the pulley. So I'm going to show you all. There's the pulley I'll be removing and taking the belts off. You can see that's the mower deck belt, the lower one, and then the drive belt is up on top there. Uh, and it's loose enough just to pull right off. I'm going to try and set this camera. Well, so here's the pulley and this top belt you should just be able to slip off of there. There we go. Now, to get this lower one off, you just take it out from the guides, pull on it. If you pull down hard enough, there we go. And remember, this, this pulley has dropped already a bit. There you go. I could have just pulled that pulley off. Yep, that's how it goes. So now that we have the pulley removed, we have four motor mount bolts up in here that we need to find, first of all, and take out. I removed the grass, and you can see the bolts there and there. And then that one, and unfortunately the other one is behind this bracket that holds this pulley, so we're going to have to um, possibly move that pulley or get up in there with a different type of wrench. So I have my 9 16th socket and my extensions on my impact wrench, and I'm going to get up in there and one bolt down. Two bolts down, three down, then I'm going to have to figure out how to get this other motor mount bolt loose. So with the parking brake set there, that actually moves that pulley. I don't know if you can see it, but it moves it out of a way enough to where you can get to that bolt. There's the last bolt. we go. This engine now is completely loose <clears throat> from the frame. So as long as you keep the fuel line higher than the gas tank here, you're not going to have to worry about gas draining out. So let's disconnect the fuel line here. The clamp. Now we need to remove the starter wire and it's a 7 16 I use two wrenches. One is kind of thin. Uh, to get in behind here because there's two two nuts and then you use the other 7 16 here to loosen move this wire out of the way it looks like this wire stays with the frame So 
somewhere in here we have a connection. I'm going to have to cut that zip tie so I can get in here and see what's going on. So, the wires we need to disconnect here are, we have this one. If you wiggle them, they come apart. Sometimes I have to use a pair of pliers to pull them apart. This one, you just squeeze each side here and it wiggle it and it pulls off. And the engine, believe it or not, just sets in the muffler. So if you lift it straight off, it'll come right out of the muffler. You don't have to loosen anything up there. So it looks like it's a Torx 25 bit. And I'll just loosen it enough to pull the cable out of there. And then, as you can see where the cable mounts here, it pulls down and you can pull it right out. I think I'm just going to bend this out of my way ah, for now. That way I can get in here, hopefully. I don't want to have to remove that, although it's only two bolts holding it on. But it's a half inch. See the whole engine move? Once again, this is a T25 Torx bit. And I loosen it just enough so I can pull the cable out and pull it. So as you can see, this engine's ready to come out of here. Is what the engine looks like when it's out of the lawnmower. Now we need to see what's in this box right here. Looks like that's a uh, packing foam or something. I'm not quite sure what all that white powder is all over it. it. Has an instruction manual. Maybe that'll tell me what's up. So this is the pack that comes with that engine. Looks like we might have to replace this wiring harness. They don't give new motor mount bolts, unfortunately. Not sure why they give the uh, exhaust gaskets and new exhaust bolts we'll find out right. I'm glad to see that there's a new oil filter and fuel filter on this brand new Briggs & Stratton engine it's a 24 horsepower model the one I took out of there was a 25 I'm not quite sure why they sent me a 24 but this will work and we also need to clean off the mounting surface putty knife I'll use here to make sure all the chunks are off so the engine sits on there square. Alright, time to beast out here. I think this engine will just lift up. Yep. Boom. Careful of the shaft. Voila. So these motor mount areas on this new engine, they are not threaded. So the, the mounting bolts Briggs and Stratton uses are actually not perfectly round. I don't know if you can see that. They're triangular shaped and they're self-tapping. I don't feel comfortable doing that. I'm always worried I'm going to break one of these off. So I'm going to tap uh, the holes or at least tap them halfway through or so so I can get these started and 
Uh, just know that I'm not going to break one of these off on the inside. Okay, so this is how I determine which tap I need. I just line up the threads like this. I don't know if you can see that, but threads line up. And it is a 3 8 16 bit that you need for that. You'll want to make sure to spray some lube in these holes and throughout the tapping process. Alright, the important thing is, is just to get it started nice and straight. <clears throat> Once it bites in... Oh, see, that's a problem. My uh, tap is hitting the shaft. So we improvise. This is how I'm going to do it. Sure am glad that guy is cutting concrete next door again. So tapping bolts are pretty easy. You just have to make sure you go in straight. And the tool really does the work. I already had it lubricated in here. I'm just going to start turning it in. Well folks, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little noisy. Uh, the neighbor on one side of me is cutting concrete. The other neighbor has been using a blower uh, out in the street for about two hours and he almost got hit by a car, so now he's cussing up a storm. Uh, so I'm just going to have to continue anyways. And you know, it's, just, it's tapping really easy. You know when threading or tapping holes by hand, uh, you just kind of want to go slow. When it gets, starts to get too tight, you just back it out, clean out the hole, clean out the bit, and go in again. Make sure it's nice and lubricated as well. I got the engine in here. I tapped out the, the holes. And you can see I've tapped them out. Not quite all of the way, but tap them out most of the way which should be good enough. It's time to get the motor mount bolts on. All right, it went in no problem. That's a good sign. Try this one. Yep, they're all going in good so I'm gonna finish this up and put the pulley back on and get back to you guys. So I always put a little bit of anti-seize compound, that little silver blob there, on the pulley bolt and inside the pulley. So if I ever have to work on this lawn mower again <clears throat> and have to take off this pulley, I'll be able to get it off easy. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to put anti-seize all around the shaft there as well. So to put this pulley back on, you just have to match the keyway on the shaft there to the keyway inside the pulley. And it's a good idea to get it inside that belt at this time, too. Make sure that parking brake is still set. All right, so we'll spin this around until we line up the keys. There we go. And now's the time to put the belt, the drive belt, <clears throat> excuse me, on that pulley. And so to get the belt on, just make sure it's inside the keeper here. You wrap it around, and then if you turn the engine, the belt will slide right into place. Okay, so we have the motor mount bolts on, we have the pulley on, we have both belts in place. Uh, time to start working on the wiring here. Looks like on this engine, the uh, fuel pump is on this side, so we'll reroute the fuel line there. It looks like we can shorten it quite a bit. Well, it looks like I need to swap the um, exhaust pipes off of the old motor. Guess that's why they sent new exhaust gaskets with this engine. They also sent a different wiring harness, which uh, I'll be figuring out shortly here. Well, Briggs sent this wiring harness uh, with this new engine, but 
It looks like it just plugs in to me, so I guess we don't need it. So it's starting to rain out here again, guys. I checked the plug in and it uh, everything lines up, so it just plugs right in. There, wiring harness done. Now we need to hook up the starter cable. All right, I gotta shut it down, folks. Raining too hard. Time to take these off. So don't forget to um, remove the gaskets, the old gaskets, a lot of times they're stuck on there. I've uh, cleaned off the surface too with a razor blade after I removed the gasket. So I have both exhaust pipes installed and they're in the muffler. It's time to put this muffler guard back on. A few other pieces I have to swap over. I have to swap over the bracket that holds the, uh, I believe it's the choke cable. That's the piece we need to get off. Oh man, those are tiny little bolts. Turns out these are 7 30 seconds bolts. I don't think I've ever used this socket. And uh, there is a linkage involved here, so take note where it mounts on the other carburetor. Hopefully I won't have to take too much apart to uh, get it on. There we go. <clears throat> Here is where we need to be to mount up this linkage. And I'm pretty sure <clears throat> I can do it without taking anything off, hopefully, if I come in at the right angle. So this is how the linkage goes on. I'm going to take this out in hopes that I can get it in here easier. Yeah, I can get it in. I just have to work the angles. The camera is not going to be able to see, so I'm going to just take time to hook up the cables. Boom. And it takes about two quarts to fill it up, I think. Looks like uh, maybe two and a little bit more. I think we're ready to start this thing. See what happens. <laughs> 